March 1953. The Soviet Union mourns the death of Stalin. For almost three decades, Stalin ruled supreme. How would they manage without him? It felt as if the whole world was about to collapse. We wondered what was going to happen to us. We thought of Stalin as our father, who would always look after us. Stalin died without naming a successor. A collective leadership emerged, led by Georgi Malenkov, Lavrenti Beria, Vyacheslav Molotov, and Nikita Khrushchev. Millions of Russians grieved for their dead leader, even though his rule had been ruthless and their own welfare neglected. Stalin had transformed the Soviet Union into a superpower, but at his death, relations with America and the West had seldom been worse. For 10 years, the world has been dominated by the malignant power of Stalin. A new era begins, an era in which the guiding spirit is liberty, not enslavement, and when human relations will be those of fraternity, not one man domination. America too had a new leadership. President Eisenhower, Secretary of State Dulles, and Vice President Nixon pledged that they would roll back the frontiers of Soviet power. Eisenhower and Dulles had accused the Truman administration of being soft on communism. Now they had the opportunity to challenge Soviet power. But could Eastern Europe be freed from Soviet domination without a nuclear war? Dulles had talked about liberation. But Eisenhower had insisted that he do so, that when he did so, he couple it with by peaceful means. And so it is not at all obvious how a liberation in the sense of rollback could be achieved merely by peaceful means. In the Kremlin power struggle, Khrushchev had outmaneuvered Malenkov and Molotov. In 1955, he led a Soviet delegation to Yugoslavia. Khrushchev wanted to repair the damage Stalin had caused by expelling President Tito's Yugoslavia from the communist bloc. My father, he told that uh, these people fought against fascism. And really, it is only one country in the Europe who won itself, not uh, by the help of the Soviet Union, itself. So he told, I have to go there not invite Tita in Soviet Union because we are a big country and we have to show them that we were wrong. Tito's Yugoslavia remained the only communist country in Europe independent of the Kremlin. <laughs> Inside the Soviet Union, Khrushchev wanted to overcome the legacy of Stalinist terror and hardship. He put more resources into the production of consumer goods and housing. Thousands of political prisoners had been freed from the Gulag. My father was a strong believer in the communism. For him, it was the best life to the people. It is like the heaven of the earth. And he many times repeat that it is impossible to live in the heaven surrounded by the barbavais. Khrushchev used the 20th Soviet Party Congress to end the hero worship of Stalin and expose the cruelties of his dictatorship. <laughs> During a secret session, Khrushchev made a speech that astounded everyone present. 
When he made his speech, people in the hall started to groan. There were shouts of shame. Stalin, Khrushchev told his audience, had ordered the imprisonment and execution of thousands of loyal communists, workers, managers, and soldiers. No one, peasant or general, had been safe from Stalin's terror. Sam Khrushchev был не безгрешен. Khrushchev himself wasn't without guilt. He had played an active part in Stalin's repressions in Ukraine and in other parts of the country. He had no moral right to speak about Stalin as if he himself was pure. He did not say anything new for me or for the majority of my friends. He did not say everything that needed to be said, but we were happy that at least it was said. He said it in a half whisper, literally in secret. It was not printed in the newspapers, but came out in a leaflet read at party meetings and sometimes outside. We used to say, this is the beginning of truth. Truth will win. This fear, this tormenting fear after Stalin's death began to fade away. After the 20th Congress, it looked as if this fear would never return. Khrushchev's secret speech was perfect propaganda for the American-financed Radio Free Europe. The text of Khrushchev's speech was broadcast after the CIA received a copy from the Israeli intelligence service. They were just repeating for 24 hours, one hour speech, over and over and over again. And uh, this was to the party people who were brainwashed, were led to believe, and they did believe, that Stalin is God that he couldn't make any mistake. Everything he, he did was infallible. Suddenly, the, their faith, their religion collapsed. Poland was fertile territory for Radio Free Europe's message. Stalinist policies had brought Polish workers close to revolt. After years of shortages and hard work, they wanted change. In June 1956, workers in Poznan demanded bread, liberty and freedom for the Roman Catholic Church and, above all, an end to the Soviet domination of Poland. The demonstrators were met with Polish tanks and Polish bullets. Seventy-four people were killed. Young protesters faced a show trial to which foreign journalists were invited. What really shocked the government, the regime, was that it was the workers who rose. Uh, it was not the people that they were afraid of. It was not the um, sort of intellectuals. It was not people involved in politics. It was real workers, and they were disgusted. Uh, so that was a terrible blow to the regime. The uprising in Poznan fueled the spirit of rebellion. Backed by Polish workers, reformers in the Communist Party made ever more radical demands. Some even called for the withdrawal of Soviet troops. The reformers turned to Władysław Gomułka, a patriotic communist imprisoned under Stalin. Without consulting the Kremlin, Polish communists chose him as their new leader. Fearful of an anti-Russian revolt, Moscow ordered Soviet troops to advance on Warsaw, and Khrushchev flew to Poland to teach Gomulka who was boss. 
We were both horrified and amused because he behaved in a very strange way. He was running around and shaking his fist. He accused us of wanting to break away and said they wouldn't allow it. He was behaving very badly. While Gomulka and Khrushchev argued, Soviet troops positioned themselves ready to strike. America looked on. You're about to see the Secretary of State, John Foster Dulles, face the nation with questions from veteran correspondents representing the nation's press. On the 17th of June, 1953, Mr. Secretary, the people of East Germany rose against the communist regime and the Russians were able to come in and repress, suppress the uprising by means of armed force. Uh, we, at that time, sat back and allowed this to happen. Would we sit back again in a similar fashion if this, uh, if this kind of uprising were to take place in Poland? Well, I do not think uh, that uh, we would send our own armed forces uh, into uh, Poland or into uh, East Germany under those uh, circumstances. I doubt if that would be a profitable or desirable thing to do. It would be the last thing in the world that these people who are trying to win their independence that would want. Uh, that would precipitate a full-scale world war, and the, probably the result of that would be all these people would be wiped out. Because he had the backing of the Polish army and the Polish people, Gomulka won his argument with Khrushchev. Gomulka promised that Poland would remain a loyal member of the Warsaw Pact. In return, he secured greater freedom of action in Polish domestic affairs. As Soviet troops were ordered back to barracks, Gomulka addressed the people. Wiele nieprawości i bolesnych rozczarowań. Idee socjalizmu przeniknięte duchem wolności człowieka i poszanowania praw obywatela w praktyce ulegały głębokim wypaczeniom. Słowa nie znajdowały pokrycia w rzeczywistości. Gomułka's promise of a freer, more Polish nation calmed the demonstrators. Gomulka told me a few years later that he had a conversation with Soviet Marshal Zhukov, who had been drinking. Zhukov said, we were so well prepared that we could have been all over Poland in three days. We had very detailed plans. And Gomulka replied, did you plan how many people on both sides would have perished? 